Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We got this Nika Pure Malt, a red chipmunk, and a yellow dummy. All sounds good. Let's test it. Test it. All right, Bruno, so we've done one other Nika before. That was the coffee Nika, the coffee still. I think it's coffee grain whiskey, they call it. They but call it's from it the coffee, coffee grain? Still. I don't remember it grain, but okay. Coffee still. But it was a Nika. I'd, you know, I'd have to look. Well, there's no see. need to look. It doesn't matter. It's all on the internet, as we've been told by some of our commenters. <laughs> this is an honor, honor of, and you're going to have to say it, uh, Masataka Takatsuru. Well said, sir. I mean, I really <laughs> want to give the honor to it. Um, one of the cool things, again, with Japanese whiskeys, they use the screw-off cap. Uh, they don't use corks. And uh, everything we're learning over time I, is, although I love the sound of the cork, I don't this know, is a better preserver. Well, I don't know if they are all doing it, but sure. the ones that we've had are. Well, the Yamasakis. And I know that they prefer it. Yeah, the Yamasakis and the Nika that we've had. And we've had the, you the bought Biki, the, no, the, the Yamasaki, uh, Hakushu. Well, you bought the Yamazaki 18 year. Right. And the 12. Three, almost a $300 bottle. Screw top. top. Um, they say that the, or they believe the plastic and the, the seal in there holds up much better and longer than a, a natural wood cork does. You don't have to worry about the wood cork rotting. You don't have to worry about any of the flavors from the wood cork getting into the whiskey. You know, so if, Japanese. If they do it, I know it's like proven. I will tell you from what I've kind of read and studied, the it Japanese up. make everything an art. They want to do it everything the best. I would say they, take they hold pride. it in high respect, high regard. Yes. And uh, they'll, they, it turns into an art form. And you're right. There's like this level of respect that's there when they do it. Now, I'd say I've been impressed with the Japanese whiskeys we've done. And you start, you were mentioning um, Hibiki we have not done. Right. Like, it was the a Hakushu, Hakushu we did. Uh, Yamazaki's. And 12 the, and 18. Yep. And then the Nika coffee whiskey. Right. That's our experience with the, uh, the now, land of the rising sun. And now the Nika pure malt. Right. Uh, the nose but, here is unbelievable. Let's, uh, we, we said, and I hate to keep pronouncing it, Masataka Takatsuru. Well said. Uh, he's the founder of Nika, and he's also the first um, basically Japanese person that went to Scotland to study the craft of whiskey making, right? You know, I don't know on that one. And on our cheat board, we have two Japanese names. So I was a little bit thrown on which that, one's which. <laughs> that's where you built two distilleries, Yoichi gotcha. and Miyagikyo. Thank you. Good call. I'm deferring to you on both pronunciation <laughs> and I don't history. know if that's right or not. <laughs> I, I do know, and I don't know the name, and I'm sure you're correct. I know there was a Japanese fellow that went over in like 1921 or two and worked at a distillery, I don't know which one, in Scotland, and learned the craft, mm -hmm. and took the craft home to Japan. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of respect to him for doing it and bringing it home. Yes. So, the, the nose, um, delicious. I get a chocolate fudge, and a layering just underneath of cranberry. Boy, that chocolate fudge is sweet. A little bit of oak, a little bit of vanilla. You? I don't know about chocolate fudge. Maybe. Mm. I don't have that in my notes. I do have it's fruity. It's malty. I can smell that maltiness. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great nose. I've got cotton candy and tangerine. Hmm. But fudge brownie. Chocolate fudge. Chocolate fudge. Yeah, like a real strong chocolate. Mm. I, get, um, I get some of that grassiness, which is the maltiness as well. Now, I'm with you, um, both on my notes and my taste. I've got fruit moving to a nice sweetness, a nice, I don't know, I don't know why fruit moving to sweet is what I wrote. Cereal grain, 
that trails continues to trail out with this with the sweetness on the palate and then it just kind of fades away uh, but it's an odd trailing because it's not a particular flavor I can I can nail it's just there's a sweetness that lingers and then disappears mm -hmm. I just got like a honey sweetness mm. very very pleasing yeah it's a great nose now, I, in my notes, the nose gets even more distinct with some water. Um, I've got this great note in here, but I want to re-nose it and just see if it's changed, because this was a couple months ago that I made the notes on this. Hmm. Um, I've got that sugar sweetness on the taste neat. Hmm. Um, a light, fruity, exotic fruit. Hmm. I mean, similar to a tangerine, a mango, something along those lines. Orange zest, maybe. Have you added water? No, okay. not neat. I've added water. And I can just get it. I don't know if any of you have had homemade ice cream, but I've got listed Grandma's Homemade Ice Cream Slowly Churning. And when it does that, it puts off both a sugary kind of sweet aroma that I'm definitely getting here. Now in my notes, I also put, uh, I describe it further as softly sweet. It's not a, uh, it's not like that bourbon corn sweetness. This is a sweetness that's just underneath and I'm with you. There's like a, uh, almost like a fruity sweetness I can pick up as well. And grandma's freshly churned ice cream, homemade ice cream. Hmm. With like vanilla in it? Yes. When you, it's almost like that vanilla bean, you know, when she's churned it and she's scooping it out and she's handing it over to you. And it's just got a whole different kind of ice cream flavor. Now, I, I do have this is a non age statement. There. Hmm. And I do have, though, just by how rich and full this is, it reminds me of a 15 to 18 year mm. old yeah, it's whiskey. delicious, yeah. I don't think it is. No. Just because of the price point of it. And I think if it was, they would put that on there. Well, I think I so. I think it's a younger whiskey. I agree, but I think things are aging a little faster at their, okay. uh, where they're located. Okay. I think sure. they're a little warmer. It's not as mm -hmm. northern as Scotland. So I think, <clears throat> I think they're getting a little yeah. bit more of a rapid aging. Hmm. Um, I don't. I didn't. I don't have it in my notes anyway. I don't get that much of a change with with the water on it. Um, I've got rose petals in my notes, and that it's a buttery taste or a buttery mouthfeel. I definitely get that creaminess. I get a hazelnut, mm. and what I listed here is pine bark. Now I grew up in the mountains of Colorado. Pine trees all over the place, and you get like a sappy sweet but a piney kind of and it's not real strong it's not like the pine needles but the pine bark and i'm getting that as well it's in my notes i get it here now it's almost like a, a little bit of winter greens too strong but a piney a hazelnut a pine bark very very interesting i never get these kind of notes hmm. i don't get pine bark or anything like that i would have i as soon as you said hazelnut, I thought almond. There's mm. definitely a nuttiness that's mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. So I did add that to my notes. But um, mm. You know, it's got this burst of flavor right after you swallow where you get this like extra little like, like a little pop, a little explosion, a little pot of explosion. It's sweet, it's floral, nutty, oaky, not overly oaked. Delicious. Delicious. I'm putting this at a 90 and I haven't looked at you. Oh, there you go, 89. Close. I'm putting it, it at it's, a 90. Man, it's, it's really close. There's something, there is something a little underlying, uh, uh, just a kind of a harsh whiskey. Hmm. Hmm. Um, it, it, that's in there. What this does for me and why Younger. it's a 90, it, it, it maybe is a little young. I it's so unique for me these these flavor profiles I'm pulling out of there. 
um, that it rises in score for me due to its uniqueness. I'm not quite going to say it's complexity, but it's uniqueness is where it gets me. It's definitely different from the normal for me. Taste notes show it. My tasting redone here shows it. And that's why it rises in that score. Love what it brings. It's like a fresh perspective. I just got a little lemon zest. Hmm. Is it worth it? $60. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I thought you were going to go higher than that. Hmm. This is very much worth it. Well, in fact, is this is one I'd picked up in Texas when mm. I was on a trip down there, and I had oh, I had three Texas. or four Dallas. Huh. I had three or four in the cart, and um, I three texted or four of these? you. No, different ones. You could have bought three or four of these. <laughs> I wouldn't have been mad at you. Well, that's the one I'd asked you if you wanted, or you said you wanted that one, and then we ended up. Uh, I yeah. bought it. Yes, you did. I was going to buy it from you. I think when I. I don't know why I really liked it, but I think we talked and I, you said you was really warming up to you, didn't you? Did you? I, I think so, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I liked it. If you want me to pay you for it, I'll buy it off of you at any time. Oh, no, either way. It was paid for, so I was like, if you want it, you can have it. If not, I'll keep it. Gotcha. And you never paid me for it. I did not. It's, so. it's yours, but I could see me. <laughs> I definitely say it's worth it. So, I think, I don't know. I think that's probably top end, though. I think if you... I mean, it's a good Japanese whiskey. Well, fact is, you know, uh, in our area, Yamazaki 12 is $80, $90. Yeah, and is... I would say it's right in there with it. Oh, I would. Well, and I'd have cheaper. to do them. So, yeah. That's yeah, I'd have it. to do them side by side. I think this has got a little bit of more of a unique it's, flavor profile. Than it's a little Yamazaki lighter 12. and a lot of, I think, a little fruitier. Yamazaki's yes. a little, little richer, a little darker. I haven't had the 12 in a while. Yeah. Um, I would have to try it head to head. But, uh, yeah, at this price, um, definitely worth it. 100% worth it. Go out and give it a try if you can find it. Um, I know when you called me, I said, oh, yeah, I'll buy that. And then we kind of tried it, and I was like, I'll still pay for it, but I forget. Yeah, I know there was some I mean, other I, stuff coming. Like I said, if at any point money gets tight for you, I'll send you a little $60. Bill. Because I also picked up the Balcones Brimstone, but you never offered to pay for it. It's also unique. <laughs> It's sagebrush fire. So, but yeah, I'll give you a $60 bill at any time. <laughs> well, thank you to uh, Masataka Takatsuru. Thank you, sir, for went your to expertise. Scotland and studied. In the 20s, 1920s. I mean, you know it had to be an uphill battle. Comes back and, and becomes the founder of Nika Distillery. Way to go, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Scotch it. You scotch gods. Salancha. Dummies. Dummies.